Hello everyone, welcome to another Photoshop editing tutorial. In this video, we will turn this panoramic image into this one. So all in all, we will add some more contrast, work on the exposure, make the shelf cloud in the back a lot more dramatic and also make the field in the foreground a lot brighter. To follow along this tutorial, you can find all the needed raw files in the description of the video and now let's begin with the editing. Here we are in the camera raw editor for the basic raw adjustments first of course. I already have opened up the panoramic image. If you want to know how to merge it, that's pretty easy. I'm just selecting all the vertical shots like this. Then right click on that selection and go to merge to panorama. Depending on how many images you are merging, this will take a while, but you will end up with something like this. You can of course play around with the settings here, but I kind of prefer working with this base shot. So let's hit merge. Once that is done, you end up with an image like this. And of course we do need to crop this a little bit to get rid of those gaps on the edges of the image. The focus for this image of course lies on the shelf cloud in the back. So I'm going to take away a bit from both sides here. I'm trying to centering this cloud. Maybe take also a bit away from the top part. But that looks pretty good to me. Alright, nice. Now the exposure is really good already. You can see there's no underexposure and no overexposure whatsoever looking at the histogram. For the next step, I do want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. Just to have a bit more neutral image. Then for the basic stuff on the white balance, I'm going with the auto setting, which will give us some very good natural color tones, which is exactly what I want here. Then I'm heading straight to the texture slider and bring that up a notch. And I also raise the vibrance a bit. Okay, now if you're wondering why I don't adjust the exposure here, that's because I do want to do that with local adjustments. Because changing those sliders globally would just not look that good. So let's head straight into the masking panel. And I do want to start working on the sky first. Therefore I'm using a linear gradient. Uh, let's drag it down like this maybe. And right away bring down the exposure. I don't want the top part to be that bright. So that will be very helpful in making this whole shot look a lot more dramatic. Alright, next up we made the image darker so now the field in the foreground needs to be a little brighter. For that reason I am going to use a color range mask and simply pick a color from here. You can see we get a really good selection for that field. And in here I'm simply bringing up the exposure. I also want to bring up the saturation. Alright. And to make this field a little more interesting I'm going to pump up the clarity. And add some texture. That looks good to me for now. Then let's go back to the sky. Again I do want to add another linear gradient only for the very top part since I still think it's too bright. Maybe like this. And again I'm bringing down the exposure. There's not much else to do here. And let's add one more linear gradient. This time however I'm going to target a bigger part of that sky. Just like that. In here I want to make the clouds very very dramatic so bringing up the contrast will help quite a bit. Let's go with something like this and I'm also going to raise the highlights which further will boost the contrast of course. Okay and finally as usual I'm going to add some clarity to the clouds because that always works quite good in my opinion. So let's bring up that clarity slider. Perfect. At this point you might see some noise coming in. I don't think that's a big deal, but if you want you could of course add some noise reduction. Let's just do that and maybe bring down the texture a little bit. Alright. Finally, let's work on the shelf cloud itself. Therefore I'm going to add a radial gradient and of course just cover this part in the center. Just like that. Make it a little thinner. Okay. In here I'm going to bring up the exposure again. Just a little bit. I'm also going to push the contrast. 
and I do want to push the whites and maybe add a little more clarity in here. And this makes this cloud look very scary. Perfect. Finally, I do want to add another linear gradient for the sky like this. And again, just bring down the exposure a bit. Perfect. Now at this point, I might decide to crop the image a little more. Also, I want to straighten it. I just saw it's not really straight, so let's do that. Okay, and I'm taking a bit away from the top again. All right, that looks really cool. So at this point, there's not much left to do, actually. Maybe we could head into the color mixer tab, play around with the orange luminance to make the field a little brighter. Maybe also add some saturation to it. Okay, maybe also some blue saturation. Perfect. I'm not going to apply any split toning for this shot since I want to keep the colors rather natural. However, I do want to add some sharpening. So let's do that real quick. And then I guess it's time to open it up in Photoshop and finish this edit. First, I'd like to clean up the shot. This means I'm going to get rid of this bottom right corner right here. If I'm just using the clone stem tool. And get rid of that grass. Also, we could use the spot healing brush to get rid of a few things. Okay, up there in the clouds, there's a little leftover from merging the panoramic image. I think I can fix that using the clone stem tool. Trying to connect those lines that work pretty good. All right. Then next up, I have the feeling I need to straighten that horizon here a little more. Therefore, I'm creating a guideline like this just to see if I have straightened the image nicely. And then I'm duplicating that layer by pressing Ctrl J just so I have a backup layer. And with that new layer, I'm hitting Ctrl T to bring up the transformation, right click and select Warp. With the Warp tool, I can simply drag around in the image and try to straighten everything. Okay, it is not perfect, but it's a lot better. Next up, I do think I want to crop some more from the right side and from the left side, just like that. And at this point, looking at this screen, we can see there's a lot of room left for some more brightness. So in this case, let's add a levels adjustment layer and bring that point for the highlights down and thus making everything a little brighter. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I think I'm pretty much done with the post-processing for this landscape since I want to keep it rather natural. I hope this quick tutorial was helpful and interesting. Of course, if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.